The whistle-stop tour of Haiti is almost over. Ban Ki-moon makes this plea. Haiti is at turning point. It can slide back into darkness if we do not properly manage. But with our help, with the help of international community, it can rise upward into light. As the goodbyes are being said, the focus is on April's conference in Washington, where governments are due to pledge money to Haiti. The foreign ministers worried that countries won't give because of the global financial crisis. Without aid, Haiti's stability is at risk, he says. Haiti's future is of great concern to Michelle Montas, the UN spokesperson. She and her husband, Jean-Dominique, ran an independent radio station here. Then he was assassinated. Do you personally have hope for Haiti now? I have always had hope for Haiti. I think I always say that hope is part of me. And I think this country will always recover. Uh, there are ways in, 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 in... It's very difficult to describe, but Haiti has always bounced back. And we have gone through a lot. And with that, what Haitians like to call the real cinema is over. The VIPs have gone, the show has finished, and the military jet departs. Plenty of pledges, pleasing rhetoric and good intentions, but what actual difference will this fleeting visit make? This is the devastating impact of the hurricanes which struck Haiti last year. Yet the struggle to recover is being undermined by the world economic slowdown. I'm on a UN helicopter flying from Port-au-Prince to Gonaïve in the north. I want to see for myself the damage which was done by Hurricane Hannah in September and witness the efforts people are making to rebuild their lives. This is what it takes to survive in Gonaïve. Rubbish, mud and flood water are the stubborn legacies of Hurricane Hannah. An estimated 500 people died here. This city is no stranger to the destruction brought by hurricanes. Five years ago, 2,000 people perished. Gonaïve has a proud past. It's the city where Haitian leaders declared independence from France. The present is a struggle. This is the roof of a house that was damaged by Hurricane Hannah. And this is the level of the mud that was dumped onto the road by the floods that came with the hurricane. And look, the mud is almost at the same level as the roof of the house. And that's why in this part of the city of Gonaïve, people still haven't been able to move back into their homes six months after the hurricane. Janet Eugene's life changed on the 1st of September. The flood water from the hurricane destroyed her three-bedroomed house. All that's left is mud. People whose homes were within 10 meters of the canals aren't supposed to rebuild them as they're sure to flood again. Janet's been sleeping on neighbors' floors. You can sense the desperation as mothers and their children queue up for their daily ration of porridge at this World Food Programme feeding centre. The focus is absolute. It's on the size of the portions. No one wants to miss out. This place is a lifeline for those who've lost so much. Diggers are hard at work moving the mud. The air is full of dust. It covers everything with a thin film. In the aftermath of the hurricane, 
the UN launched an appeal for Haiti, asking for $127 million. Only half the money has been raised. Governments are suffering from the financial crisis, and Haiti isn't seen as the most pressing crisis in the world. Hey, tell me, why is this car still here? Uh, this car has been here since uh, September. Uh -huh. um, when uh, the hurricane hit, uh, the water level was so high that uh, this car was completely underwater. Right. And uh, there's so much mud in, in town that, uh, you know, we go from area to area and uh, nothing, nothing has happened in this area since the beginning. Bakary Doombia's aid agency has helped to rehouse 5,000 people in Gonaive. Clearing the city has been a Herculean task. With all this mud everywhere, how can you rebuild? Um, mud for the rebuilding is an obstacle. And um, to be able to rebuild, we have first to be able to remove the mud in this area. Because you can see there's not uh, many families here. And uh, to be able to do a rebuilding, you have to have the families present. So from the experience we've had in most of uh, and all the, the areas, in all the roads we've already cleaned, uh, as soon as we remove the mud uh, in the street, families uh, come back and uh, we are able to work with them in uh, the, the construction program of uh, uh, their houses. It's not only houses which were destroyed by the hurricane. This used to be the main road from Gonaive to Port-au-Prince. The flooding created this lake, which is gradually evaporating, to reveal the ruined homes. Instead of the bustle of daily life and the roar of the highway, there's an eerie calm. This is what used to be the main street in Gonaive. Six months after Hurricane Hannah struck, you can see what kind of condition it's in. Even before, the people in this city have been able to recover from the last hurricane season. They're beginning to worry about what the next one may bring. <laughs>